Hello, this is the second in uh, two lecture series on return on investment. Uh, we will be talking this evening through a homework exercise that you will have to do uh, immediately following this lecture or before you get to the next lecture and be turned in for a grade. And I would like to go over that homework exercise uh, in this lecture. Uh, so if you'll pull out your notes, and, uh, or you, I guess you can read along on the screen here if you want, but you may want to pull out your notes and make, uh, make annotations as we move along. Uh, let's start through the homework. Your requirement is to write out and turn in for grade an ROI analysis for the following proposed IT project using the absolute method of ROI calculation. And then we will also extend that uh, to uh, using an IRR uh, calculation. Let me just talk about these briefly. When we talk about the absolute value method um, of ROI calculation, the equation is that return on investment is equal to uh, the total lifetime benefit that comes from the investment minus the total lifetime cost. And sometimes we will see that divided by the total lifetime in years. And sometimes it will just be expressed as this difference. And then in English, we would add the term over whatever, over a period of time. So a couple of examples here. Let's say that the total lifetime benefit of an investment is $6 million and that the total lifetime cost of an investment is $2 million. Um, we either state that as the ROI is $4 million over five years, or we will go ahead and divide that out and we'll say that's $4 million divided by five um, which comes out to be 0.8 million per year. So we, <clears throat> we have a better metric than absolute value of RO, ROI that CFOs feel more comfortable with, and that is the internal rate of return metric. Okay, now we have an equation uh, that we use uh, in this course. It's it's a simplified equation for internal rate of return, but basically it, it certainly will um, be quite adequate for the work that we're doing here and in most uh, IT operations. We look at the total lifetime benefit divided by the total lifetime cost raised to the power of one over the lifetime in years minus one. Okay, so Let's ask the question here. If we have a um, million dollar investment, in an IT system, and we're going to get one and a half million out of that, we want to know, is that a good investment? Well, um, the question is, is how long does it take to get that one and a half million out? If, for example, we get that one and a half million out in one year, then let's see what the internal rate of return on that is. Um, well, according to our equation here, the benefit is 1.5 million. Divide that by 1 million. Raise that to the power of 1 over 1 year, to the 1. Okay, subtract 1, okay, and we see that this has got 1.5 divided by 1 is 1.5 raised to the 1 power. That's still 1.5 minus 1. That's 0.5, which is 50%. Okay, that's got an internal rate of return of 50%. All right, now let's say that instead of us getting that 1.5 million out in one year, that it took us five years to get that out. Okay, so using this same equation, 
we'll come down here and we'll say, okay, the benefit still is 1.5 million and the cost is still 1 million, but we're now raising this to the 1 over 5th power minus 1. Okay, well, if, you, um, if we take this ratio right here, 1.5 million, um, and we raise that to 1.5 million um, raised to the 1 fifth power, so that's 0.2, okay, um, that's 1.084 and now minus 1. Okay, we come out with 0 0.084 or 8.4 percent. All right, so we see that this comes out to be 8.4 percent. All right, now <clears throat> here is the way a CFO looks at this. A CFO says, all right, look, we're trying to figure out how to maximize the profit of the business. So if, if the folks from IT come to me and ask me for a million dollars that they want me to invest in an IT project and they're promising me a $1.5 million return on that investment, but it's going to take five years to do it, then the internal rate of return is 8.4% if on the other hand, I took that same million dollars and I invested it in a mutual fund that I was fairly confident would yield at least a 10% return, then I'm better off doing this for the business than I am investing in the IT project. Okay? And, and most large corporations have what they call a hurdle rate. Now, a hurdle rate is the minimum internal rate of return that a project can yield before the CFO will feel comfortable about investing in it. And typically, the hurdle rate for a company is on the order of 20%. Some companies will be a little less than that. Some companies may be considerably more. It depends on the type of business that they're in and what's reasonable to expect. Um, but basically what that means to the CFO is if you can't show me an internal rate of return of at least 20%, then I'm not going to invest in the project. Um, let's take a look at a couple of sets of numbers here just to help us um, understand this maybe a little bit better. If I start with... Um, say a $1 million investment, and I have a way to invest that at 10% per year. All right, well, at the end of year one, that million dollars is going to be 1 million plus 10% of 1 million, which is another 100,000. We'll just say that we're doing this at simple um, compounding simple interest compounded annually. Uh, so this turns out to be at the end of year one, you're going to have uh, $1,100. Okay, at the end of year two, still investing this at 10%, we're going to have 10% um, of this added to that, which works out to be... Um, 1.2 million dollars. At the end of year three, we take 10 percent of this and add it back to this number. That works out to be 1.3 million dollars. At the end of year four, again 10 percent of this number added back to it works out to be um, 1.46 million dollars and at the end of year five ten percent of this added back to it works out to be just over 1.6 million dollars all right now if we had taken the same million dollars and invested it at 20 percent then at the end of year one, 
Um, it would have been 20% of a